What's happening, folks? Today, we're going to talk about open carry, and that's holding, having a gun on your hip for all the world to see. Those of you who have followed me in the past know that I have really been hard on this. However, I have a newer perspective, a, maybe even a change of heart regarding open carry. And I want to talk about that because it is an interesting conversation. Also, in this episode, we're going to delve into training requirements for carrying. When you're carrying lethal force around there, is there any training considerations a person has to have before they're able to just be walking through public with a gun. So we'll talk about that. Also in this episode, we have our very famous, no, our very popular, I'm like, popular. I don't know. It's very like, most famous and popular. Famous. Yeah. We're very famous. <laughs> For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> Leatherbound books and such. Anyway, our Q and ambush section, which is, I meant to say it's popular. People yes. really, really like that section. Also, our dad jokes and our training tip. All of that happens. you got to be on Watch WPSN to see the full episode. If you're tuning in on podcast or on YouTube or wherever this happens to be, know that this is a shorter segment, and then you're going to get a whole lot from it. You're going to hear main piece of the conversation, but you're like, hey, I got Jip. Where's the Q and Ambush section? Watch WPSN.com. That's where it's at. And uh, I'm John Lovell. I'm your host, uh, and we're jumping in now. I wonder if, if we're always going to dance through that. You Absolutely. Guys Absolutely. I think we will. Yeah. Yeah. It so, will never stop. The dancing never stops when that music plays, The John. dancing never stops. Well, I mean, we're in like episode 285, and yeah. then we're all kind of like... Well, what everyone doesn't know well, is that um, we record you uh, while the song is going, and there will be an episode where we just play all 200 episodes of you. <laughs> of dancing. Doing all of that dancing. 10 seconds of that. People are like, wow, we're all, uh, John's... Uh... It's just a lot of dancing. He really yeah, he's cuts not good. loose. Yeah, he's, he's not, not good. He's not, but he is enthusiastic. <laughs> is, so. I make up for all talent with enthusiasm. <laughs> right? Just raw. I'm but real he proud. Is, he's That's passionate. all we really want. Oh, very That's good. That's all we really want. Uh, well, look, th no, this is going to be an excellent topic. I want us to get into it and not stop. But first, let's go ahead and get it. It's time for our shameless plug. You're going to do the voice. Right? I know. I did it lower that I look, time. Yeah, I look I forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shameless plug. That was slower. I felt it was. Like, I felt like slow dance. I do to like that. to mix it up. Well, That's today's good. shameless plug is Solomon Shoes. Do you have some Solomon Shoes on today, John? I do. I do. Can you? Yes. So, Shalom, so Shalomon, Solomon Shoes, from training to everyday wear, Solomon offers a variety of options for everyone. Offered in Gore-Tex waterproof material for extreme situations, reinforced durability, advanced stability, lightweight construction, Solomon Shoes, do you approve of the ones we have on our I website? Do, I do mainly, well, if it's on our website, I approve it. Nothing goes on the website unless it's like a good value. <laughs> yeah, this like, is junk. If it's no, trash, yeah. it's gone. If it's good, we put it on. That's how yeah. it works. But I like Solomon Shoes the most because it sounds like a Lord of the Rings character. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Secondarily, they're, they're, I think they're the best shoes on the market. And though they're a little pricier, I found myself going to other, you know, green pastures and checking out. Like, oh, I'll try this one. And I always come back uh, to Solomon. And so, ooh, Oh, look at that stretch. Look yeah. at that. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. I think I pulled something there, but I'm going to smile through it. Uh, yeah, these are the boots, and they are Gore-Tex. And as an old infantry guy, I insist on dry feet. Uh, also, we have, uh, like, running shoes that aren't Gore-Tex. And then there's some training shoes that are. I really, really like them. I think they're very good value. And so, yeah, very good. And so they breathe, and they keep your feet dry. And so I think they're the best around. Warning on the running shoes and the training shoes. They wear out quicker, so don't just wear them every day. It's kind of more like specialty purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, the boots you can wear every day. I wear them every, like almost every day. And so, anyway, that's enough shameless plug. I want to jump into this subject. Anything it. else? Did we? No, nope, that's it. You got Fantastic. it. So, guys, when you are walking around and you see some dude uh, wearing a gun on their hip for all the world to see, uh, how often do you see that? First off, uh, I saw it more in Colorado. Uh, when I was there. Yeah, okay. yeah. So here in Georgia, I haven't seen it as much. When I moved to Colorado in 2010, it was, you know, they told me it's the Old West still here. And so I saw it a lot more there. I've it, seen it maybe once or twice. And that's crazy because I don't, I don't look at Colorado and think red state at all. I yeah. think of it as a super liberal place. Yeah. No, I, it seemed to be where I was was pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I saw it quite often. So uh, I don't think there are any uh, blue states. Fact check false. <laughs> no, I don't think I don't think there's blue states. I, California, I know, John. California's not a blue state. Yeah, oh, what? No, it's not blue states. It's blue cities. Blue cities in red states. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, all mm. the state, all the states are red, and, and that that's what, at least what I find. Unless you find some 
area mm. of like maybe like Massachusetts because it's so concentrated. It's kind of like <laughs> it is the city. The city uh, so, is that. So maybe it's but California, I would argue, is not a blue state because right. every time I go to California to train, yeah. I mean, we're just in it. You want to sell out a pistol or rifle class anywhere in the country by the end of this sentence, we post a class in California. Immediately, it's our Crazy. biggest customer in our Warrior Poet store. I never, ever would have guessed uh, that. It's just the major cities which turn states blue. Hmm. Uh, but there's this massive underrepresented population around the major hmm. cities. Every the, the state, if you looked at it in terms of geography, the whole state's red and then blue cities. Yeah, county which by turn county, the state. mostly red. Uh, that's a good, uh, so that's a good counter. Maybe I'm not completely right, but I am close enough to be right to say the generality. That That's a bit of a, a, a tirade there, but... Uh, what about you? But for me, for you seeing know, people with open carry. Yeah. So when I lived in Wisconsin, uh, I never saw it. And maybe this is because I live close by to Milwaukee. And so talking about the uh, being a blue city, uh, perhaps that's partly why I never saw anybody open carry ever. And in Georgia, I see it quite regularly. It feels like every single time I go to a Home Depot, I'm seeing some contractor or older guy tastefully uh, open carrying some sort of uh, Glock in a yeah. Kydex or leather bound holster, and it makes me smile. Yeah, well, sh- you know, what'll be shocking enough to some of you guys tuning in, because you know me and you know I've been hard on open carry in the past, I'll jump into those reasons. But before I kind of bring out that old axe to grind, I wanted to show that I- I've really been changing my opinion regarding open carry in general, and I wanted to make a case. For open carry, I can't believe those words are coming out of my well, mouth. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we were talking, we were talking a few days ago, you know, and about open carry, and, and you offered this up to me. You said, you know, Ben, uh, my thoughts on on open, I, I I don't feel as insulted by open carry as I used to, and I was like, really? And so it was, you know, and that's and here we are, we find ourselves in a conversation today, and so I do want to hear more about what you're thinking about that because it is not your typical stance. Yeah, and so I'll jump into the cons, but uh, before we jump into the case for open carry. What do you feel when you see somebody walking around Lowe's or wherever you happen to be with a gun on their hip? I, so I remember seeing a guy one time in the grocery store and he's pushing his basket and he's shopping and he's got a six shooter on his thigh. And my first thought was, okay, if something's going down, there's another good guy in here. Yeah. You know, because the bad guy's not rolling around with his open carry yeah. and shopping. Right. So I felt at ease when I saw it. Mm. Yeah. And so you're not nearly as, you know, uh, gun-tastic as Ben and I. We're, right. we're more in the gun world, and you kind of came to it. You weren't anti-gun. You just weren't gun culture until you kind of joined us, and now you've scaled up, right? Right, yes. So yes. I care a little bit more about your opinion even mm-hmm. than ours because it's like, what does a normal dude just interact with that? And, yeah. Uh, ben, what about you? Yeah, no, I just I can't help but feel like that guy's part of my tribe. I'm sorry. It makes me smile. I don't know why. Like, I don't feel intimidated by it. I, I don't feel frightened by it. It just makes me feel like, yeah, man, that's that's another uh, dude willing to stand in the gap uh, and protect the innocent life uh, should something crazy go down. That That is yeah. honestly how I feel about it. Uh, for me, uh, and audience won't like this very much, but I'll just be honest. Uh, uh, a lot There was a, a more smug part of me because I'm looking at this like podunk POS gun held in this sloppy, non-fitting nylon holster kind of sagging off pants that are falling up with a plumber's crack in the back and of like I'm, I'm not being mean i'm just saying it seems to be that it's like yeah. bad gun and bad equipment improperly stored with no retention so anyone can grab that junk and i'm kind of like yeah he's he's part of our tribe he's part of our good but that guy doesn't know how to run that gun like he thinks he can he's gonna try to shoot the bad guy and and shoot a non-combatant accidentally yeah. and that's not everyone it just seemed to be like most of the time, it fell more into that category. And so I've been a little bit more uh, judgy. And and it's part of the trainer in me of kind of like, man, sure, I, I can size somebody up pretty quickly and know just based on how they carry themselves and their gear and stuff, what their capabilities are with that gun. And, and, and just based on the law of probability, uh, reading those cues, I'm probably not too far off. However, before you guys excoriate me in the comments, be like, whatever, you suck, man, and I'm, you know, you've kind of fudged me out uh, or whatever. Uh, I'll say I'm actually more chummy toward uh, these people than I used to be because they are a little bit more in the tribe category. So I want to go through and make this case. So very first thing I have is it sends a message to the general public 
that we are a country built on firearms yeah. ownership, and that's a really important thing. Well, what do you guys mm-hmm. think about that? It sends a message to the general public that guns are part of our culture. Yeah, for me, I feel like open carry, and this is kind of where it's really gelling with me, I feel it's not so much a gun I am looking to hide as much as it is a conviction that I want to show. Yeah, And I, that to me, um, I like it, that. that's, I think, uh, if I want... Uh, the next generation to understand gun rights, it cannot be hidden all the time. And the only time they see it is in negative uh, context. Yeah. And so I, I, I want, I, I partly wonder if that's the reason why, like, I am not nearly as insulted by the stupidity of it as I used to be. And part of me is like, yeah, you know, there's, there's a part of me, I want to uh, have, spend a season of my life uh, in a pickup truck. And now I feel like there's a season that I want of my life that I want to spend open carrying a 1911 in a leather holster. Because I think that'd be cool. When I'm an old geriatric, you know, and I just don't give a rip about anything, I think I'll, I'll probably dual wield old cowboy six shooters <laughs> Is that what on you're a gonna... porch with boots, and I just whine about the neighbors. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> like all oh, these kids, yeah. kids these days. <laughs> But like that, that to me is, you know, it's, it's a symbolic gesture of something that is, is fundamental. And I feel like, look, maybe I wonder if part of the reason why Wisconsin's lost it, because no one's doing it in Wisconsin. And I appreciate that I see people in Georgia open carrying because my gut is, is Georgia's going to uh, enjoy gun rights, uh, stronger gun rights, much longer than Wisconsin is, maybe because of it. Oh, very good. I, I like the idea that folks out there who don't realize just how prevalent guns are, all of a sudden they start seeing gun carriers everywhere. And they're forced to interact with us. And so it would bust a lot of social media stereotypes in that all of a sudden snowflakes or folks that just don't realize how prevalent guns are, they start seeing them everywhere. And they're forced to interact with us. And so they see dads and, you know, moms and, you know, folks just blue collar and white collar and everyone's walking around and everyone's got guns and violence isn't happening from these people. They're just... Right kind of quiet sentinels smiling at you in line, being hospitable and great. But they see of like, whoa, we got a lot of guns. Uh, There are massive amounts. Yeah, there's more guns in the U.S. than people in the U.S. Holy cow, that's a lot. What if we let the uh, left and those who are anti-gunner really feel our numbers and really see of like, oh, this is a bigger cultural element. It's not this radical, fringe, awful thing. What if they really felt our numbers? And so if I was building a case for open carry, I think I would, I, I, mm. I'd start here of like, I think it is a cultural, a, a cultural change agent to let, let our whole culture know of like, no, we're a gun culture because the second amendment, sec, not, one, not the first, it was the second thing they did is to say, nope, firearms are necessary for the safeguarding of a free people and a republic. And so let's show people that. So that's the first thing I went. The next thing is, uh, is a Second Amendment conversation starter. Everyone sees you got a gun and kind of like gun, you know, like look at the face, gun, face, gun. So, uh, hey, man, how you doing? Why you got a gun? Yeah, <laughs> so right. It becomes, yeah, right? A, it becomes a conversation starter for Second Amendment advocacy. Now, this is something that folks in the, um, folks that are in the open carry camp, they already know this. They've been doing this, and this, to me, is one of the primary drivers why a lot of people carry openly. Mm. It's because they want to have this conversation. And before, it just seemed a little bit too brash in your face of like, hey, hey, what's happening? My name's John. You want to talk about my gun? You know, of like, I didn't like that yeah. element of like, yeah. it, it seemed too attention yeah. grabby. But now when gun rights are so under assault, I want those conversations all over the place. And so I've flipped a bit. Yeah, and it feels like for me, like this has really even happened within the last five years. I feel like things are on a speeding roller coaster of change. And I would say my perspective, certainly within the last 10 years, has changed on this entirely because of that. And I I wonder if I'm, I'm more apt to want to enter into that conversation because I see things rapidly heading one way or the other. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I mean, because you do have a conversation, you know, because I think there are not enough intelligent conversations about what the Second Amendment is. I mean, we have a good friend, Rick Green, uh, Patriot Academy, and, you know, he talks about the Constitution and those kind of things. And I, th- I think a lot of people, you know, you hear First Amendment, you hear Second Amendment, but do you really know what these things are about? And so if people can right. have a conversation uh, with someone who is informed, it's never a bad thing. Right. All right, uh, third thing, power and through. I'm having a good time. All Mm -hmm. right, this is good. Uh, Third thing is is it sends a message to bad guys in the area that there are protectors here ready to stand in your way. 
Uh, I, I think some bad guy casing out a place. He sees a guy with a gun on his hip and he's like, mm, maybe I could beat him. Maybe mm-hmm. not. I'll try somewhere else. I, I like that message. I do like that message that, hey, there are protectors here. Yeah. If you have something bad in mind, you should reconsider. Right. I do like that message. Yeah, when I, when I think of school security, I think of somebody with a visible gun outside a school saying to a would-be murderer, nope, not here. Yeah. Right. I mean, plain and simple. And studies show that deterrent works. Mm-hmm. It just does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe it's a little bit like the um, rule of cockroaches. If you see a cockroach, uh, you're like, oh, there's one. Oh no! Well, how many more are there? There's more hiding, yeah. uh, and so if like you see a gun, it's like, oh, well, how many more are they? Not not to put yeah. a gun as a negative, like a cockroach or something like that, but to just to say, you though. see one, mm-hmm. that's representative. Oh, there's others I don't see, and so at large, it can send a message to a community that you don't want to play here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is what we, and this is exactly what we see uh, in populations in general where there's huge gun restrictions and you just don't see as many guns, you see far more violent crime. And where gun laws are uh, not prohibitive, uh, you know, and you see guns around, violent crime isn't happening in those areas as much because bad guys don't hunt in areas where they may be easily killed. That's why 94 or 96% of all active killer events happen in gun-free zones because bad guys are cowards and they shoot fish in barrel. She, uh, wolves always hunt in sheep pastures. They don't live yep. there, so it feels, oh, it feels safe, and then you get waxed. Yep. And so that's just how the world works. Despite political rhetoric and propaganda, it's just how it works. Gun-free zone signs stop no crime. Back goes, oh, no, there's a sign! Yeah. Yeah. Run! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, that, that's uh, point three. Yeah. Uh, the fourth thing uh, in making a case for open carry, and then I want to immediately switch around, because some of you guys out there who— are a little bit more predisposed like me, you're kind of like, yeah, but what about this? I'm going to make the negation here. I'm going to make a case against open carry as well, and I'll have really good points, but let's see this through as a thought experiment because it's telling and very good. It's just edifying for us all around. Uh, The fourth thing is rural carry. You mentioned in Colorado, Mm -hmm. and that's a little surprising as like more blue, I guess, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as as you had uh, mentioned. Um, But... uh, in rural areas, uh, the social dynamic changes a bit. I know mm-hmm. when I'm riding horses, I'll oftentimes open carry. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to conceal carry when I'm riding a horse yeah. or I'm working on my farm and that I'm sounds bending terrible. over and, <laughs> and, and, you know, picking stuff up mm-hmm. and gardening or doing something like that. I don't want that on me. I'd rather it be away from me more mm-hmm. and to be comfortable. And I'm not worried about social dynamics because... I'm alone in the countryside, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't have to worry about reactionary gaps or someone yeah. grabbing my gun or something because I'm going to see him like 300 yards out. Like, hey there, leave, <laughs> <laughs> go away. I've got a lot of reactionary gaps sure. there. So, Yeah, you know, I, the rural, rural carry is, especially in Colorado, it was different for me because you know, there were times I would go uh, hiking or something like that, and I'm not really carrying anything with me. One time I was hiking and I heard a four-wheeler off in the distance which will tell your mind is actually a mountain lion up close. Mm. And I'm, I had nothing with me, and I yeah. thought, man, it would be nice if I had a piece with me uh, just to, to keep me safe in this situation. I wasn't worried about people or anything like that, but there were other circumstances that made me think it'd be nice to have something. Yeah, it changed the dynamic. You, you know, if, like, mm-hmm. unarmed, you hear a mountain lion, I'm like, I'm going to die. Yep. Right. With a gun, you're like, I'm going to get me a mountain lion kill. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to stuff that mountain lion. It's going to change wear it. that. Exactly. Gonna wear it I'm going to kill it, and then I'm immediately be like, social media, <laughs> selfie. <laughs> exactly. I killed this lion. I'm a lion killer. <laughs> Paint blood. I'm real. <laughs> So. You guys are going to love this, John. I was on the way to your house the other day, and uh, as I'm as I'm driving to your house, uh, I get stopped by like a a horde of um, of horse riding uh, people, townsfolk riding their horses, and uh, I saw more than a few guns on their on their um, hips as yeah. they're riding their horses down the main road. I thought that was hilar- hilarious. Only in Georgia could I ever expect to see that. That was pretty funny. But I found a place where I belong. <laughs> you, you like, sir. these are my people. <laughs> I get along awesome yeah, with them. Yeah, it, it like, was pretty funny. I'll, I don't know all my neighbors, but when I meet them, I'll be like, <clears throat> I like you. Yeah, and when, I got to, and when I got to John's house, this is great because, you know, then I'm like, hey, man, I passed a, a bunch of people riding horses, and we had a ton of work to do that day, and John, John's be like, so uh, do you just want to hop on some horses and go? I'm like, 
No, John, we got to record some stuff, man. I know. We didn't ride. We did work. <laughs> Boo. All right, let's make a case uh, for concealed carry now. So mm-hmm. we're flipping the script, and we're against open carry now. Very first thing is it's tactically superior to concealed carry. It just is, and there's numerous reasons why open carry is absolutely stupid from a tactical standpoint. Uh, First off is it makes a big target on your back for ambush. Bad guys, as you said, Mm -hmm. they're typically concealed carry, you know, scanning rooms. They find the biggest threat, which is the guy with a gun, and then they just shoot him in the back of the head in an opportune time, and it's an ambush. Mm -hmm. And some of you guys who are more naive and don't really do a lot of force-on-force or scenario training, you'd be like, no one will ambush me. If you're out in public, you can be ambushed. The only way to avoid ambush is be a hermit. That's it. Just never leave. I uh, I can be ambushed. I don't like that idea. I'm far harder to ambush, but I can be ambushed. Uh, every time you're yeah. paying for some, you can't be head on a swivel. You can't look 360 at every single moment. And violent encounters can happen in a minuscule, you know, just nothing, just a millisecond. And so you can be ambushed. And those who have open carry, whether it's somebody grabbing your gun, uh, and now you got to fight over your gun. So you, maybe there was an unarmed bad guy and a lot of bad guys at, at uh, kind of violent crime and a lower level crime or opportunistic. They see a gun, they see an opportunity. Yeah, and they grab that gun and go for it. And that's happened many, 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 many times. Yeah. Uh, and so it, took, it puts a target on your back and makes you kill shot number one in an unfair ambush, or you end up being fighting over your gun or... Uh, LEOs, you know, could identify you and all of a sudden, hey, there's a man with a gun here and it's not translated and he's peacefully checking out in line with a gun on his hip of like, they just hear man with a gun and he's like, whoa, and they come in and they're looking for a threat and because they came in hot with that perceived threat yeah. and you're the gun guy, you know, of a, t- you know, a lot of areas like in my air neck of the woods, cops be like, all right, cool. What kind of gun is that? That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. It's, it's, have a good day, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it'd be like that. But in a hotter city of like, you know, uh, someplace where that's not really baked into the culture as much, it could be really tense. It could go sideways. It could go bad. So anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would just say my, actually my number one concern with open carrying would be my interactions with uh, police before, during, and after an event. Not so much the event, but mm-hmm. actually my interactions with LEO. Yep. So yeah, we actually have a Q and ambush question about that. So we'll we'll dive further into that topic. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, the other case for concealed carry, and that one's the most, you know, that, that that's the priority one. That right mm-hmm. there is massive. That one point is bigger than you know four points against to me of like, man, I'm I'm more of a tactician, and so that one right there, that's real hard for me to overcome. There, yep. uh, I'd like other people to open carry, so I get the benefits of all that stuff, but. I am a concealed carry guy, so I'm not going open carry, uh, but I'm more chummy with those who do. Imagine the conversations you could have, though, John, if you open carried. You I don't might convert all of Georgia. I don't want to actually be sucked into social interaction, uh, you know, unless I, if I want a social yeah, interaction yeah. out in public and get into a big conversation on it, I'll initiate it. Elsewhere, uh, you know, otherwise... I'd like to be left alone, do my errand, and get out and go back to my family. I'm not, <laughs> fair, I'm not fishing enough. for like, will someone talk to me? <laughs> about <it>? like, <laughs> I got enough irons in the fire yeah, and yeah. enough conversations that are intentional that I'm not out there looking to like, <laughs> let me spend 20 minutes with you trying to get you into the Second <laughs> Amendment. <laughs> like, I like other people doing it. I don't want to do it because uh, I'm doing it here. Uh, the second thing for real concealed care, and this would be my last real point, is it socially distances you from friends, neighbors, coworkers, and potential relationships. Now, I'm flipping an earlier case for concealed care on its head because on the one hand, it's like, well, it's a Second Amendment conversation starter. I'm like, yeah, but now folks that aren't really into guns, uh, a person who can't look at a gun and look back at you and have no care, it just does nothing to their mind that you happen to carry a gun. That's a very small percentage of the population, by the way. Now your conversations are going to drift to that. It's going to make people just generally socially uncomfortable. Now, the two-way activist doesn't care. They're like, let's turn it up. I want to talk about it. But I personally don't want all my conversations about my gun. You know, right. like, so you got a gun? I'm like, yeah, I got a gun. Uh, anyway, and then I'm getting like, and it's going to come back to this. And they're going to make jokes about the gun. And they're going to talk about the gun. I'm like, I don't want yeah. all conversations. It just uh, becomes a, an obnoxious social thing. Uh, where it's putting friends, neighbors, coworkers, or, or folks that I have uh, yet to befriend or just me 
it, this is just almost, a wedge. it's such a distraction. They really just can't get over it. And I don't want all my conversations turning to the fact, mm-hmm. yeah, I got a gun. Yeah, it's this kind. Okay, now you're going to tell me what kind your grandfather had once. Okay, I'm going to listen to this story and try to, okay, great. All right. Okay. And now every conversation mm-hmm. kind of is, that, that's annoying mm-hmm. to me. I don't want to do it. I want someone else to do it. I don't want to do it. Any thoughts on that? I mean, for the same reason that I don't have stickers on my car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you almost want to be as gray man as possible. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't, I don't wear 5'11 uh, pants. I wear skinny jeans because I want to be like Lucas Bakken, you know, and, he, and just blend in. But of course he, I don't blend in because I'm a little heavier than he is. He does better than me. I'm just mm-hmm. being really transparent. Skinny jeans. Way to go, Lucas. Skinny jeans. So if the gun thing doesn't work out, he could lead worship. He could. He, could. he probably does. Yeah, being a, a boy band. Well, at this age, it would be a man band, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Let's get guys are making friends. Jokes at the expense of a friend. Lucas is a friend, so if he sees yeah. that, he's like, bro, you, you're, my, you're my homeboy. It's we, right. we all love you. We no, all he love does you. It well. it's doing right. great. He does it well. Yeah. And I'll totally worship along. If you, <laughs> if you, <laughs> that'll be good. All right. Uh, let, let's keep driving on. Uh, second topic is: is should there be any training required? to carry a gun. Well, I I would like to talk about that. And I also have a question, too, for you guys about what types of gun you feel comfortable seeing in public. I mean, we've mostly talked about somebody with a a piece strapped to their leg. I mean, what if they've got an AR on a sling around their neck or a Barrett, through the gr- yeah, something 50 different. cal BMG. Something different. But <laughs> judges that, up yeah. the equation. <laughs> exactly. But look, that is something for us to discuss on Watch WPSN. This is going to be our mm. transition. Yes, if you are joining us on YouTube, Rumble, uh, Twitter, anywhere else, podcast, thanks for joining us. Go to watchwpsn.com. Use code JL Show for a nice little discount. Uh, we do this every week. You can join us over there for the rest of the show. If not, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. What he said, yeah. Yeah. He's absolutely right. You are going to die in this thought experiment. It's either going to be by a gunshot or some maniac with a circular saw. We should do it right now. Yeah. We should do it right now. And if you don't like it, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay? You just you just get. Daddy died protecting life. Can we cut this entire part? Nope, nope. That can't (laughs) happen. Cut it. Nope.